Minecraft, get down from there. You're a game, you don't belong on the BBC. Minecraft, get off the Daily Mail. You haven't even inspired a gun rampage. What are you doing on the mail? Minecraft, this is getting out of hand. How can you possibly require more than one ultimate guide to Minecraft available in all good news agents for the reasonable price of $5.99? Minecraft, you've crossed a line. Why has my mum heard of you? She's as techie as an Amish OAP. Have you been talking to her? Minecraft has achieved a level of fame second only to Tetris and Wii Sports. In five years, 54 million copies have crept into homes, a critical mass which has caused it to enter the ken of people who couldn't be less into games. Minecraft takes the top spot in national news. Big events in Minecraft are a big deal. It is the first game in history to have entered the public consciousness on this level, and everyone's had a crack at figuring out why. Why a game that looks like it was made in MS Paint is a big deal from the playground to the WI. But the BBC and the Daily Mail, they rather miss the point, nattering on about building blocks and infinite worlds. Saying that Minecraft is about building blocks is like saying that pigs are about pork chops. A pig's made of pork, but you can't put bacon on a plate and expect it to oink. Minecraft is more than the sum of its parts. The spark of life is the strange, squishy humans at the keyboards. I have spoken with the masters of Minecraft, and I've gathered together the strangest and squishiest of the bunch, the people dedicating months and years to the craft, the people making the headlines. We put our cuboidal heads together to settle the question once and for all. This is my house. Well, actually, no, this is my house. But this was my house. In the first night before basic survival turned into architectural dick swinging contest, this 4x3 box of modern wood kept me safe. We humans do love to build, and there's no better building than one that's plain bigger than your neighbours. You can kind of see why the Beeb thinks Minecraft is about building. Just look at it. The ground's made of blocks, the trees are made of blocks, the pigs are made of delicious blocks. <sniffs> Players pick them up and put them down, building huts and houses and halls until, well, they get a little bored. In long periods alone, so feelings of ennui. Monuments in single player are similar to shower thoughts. They're grand, fantastic, often dangerously unhinged. But as you're never gonna share them, why bother? There comes a time while doing fixtures and fittings for your spaceport or installing decorative panelling on a shrine to your eternal glory when something hits you. A sudden realisation. An unavoidable question. What's the bloody point? I speak for the underachieving majority, but some players seem immune to creative cabin fever. They dare to dream a little bigger. Why? Westeros Craft is the most famous architectural achievement in all Voxeldom. It aims to be nothing less than a complete recreation of the Game of Thrones universe, sprawling 807 square kilometres like a cleaner, better built Los Angeles. It'd be sticking the finger up at Legoland if Legoland weren't too small for it to see. Hundreds of thousands, millions of bricks, to me, numbers nothing short of exhausting. There must be more to this game than blocks. Why don't the master craftsmen get bored? I saw all, all the crazy things people were doing in Minecraft. Uh, someone's recreating um, Middle Earth from Lord of the Rings. And then there's a guy who did the Starship Enterprise. And I just wanted to kind of tackle just like a large challenge. And I was like, you know, Game of Thrones has all these like crazy locations and castles. And you know, who hasn't built a castle in Minecraft? I'm from the technical field, and uh, I've always been interested in things that are kind of new and 
different than what currently exists and Minecraft kind of fit that for me and I had been playing for a while. I felt like it would be an interesting challenge technically and you know I enjoy art as well. So it just kind of met all the things that I really enjoy doing and the challenge. I'm always up for challenges. People like to challenge themselves um, and also where where else are you going to be able to experience all these outlandish um, fantasy, science fiction things you can only read about? A challenge, eh? Simple enough. And the opportunity to occupy a fancy world not available in other games. Relatively straightforward reasons to invest years of your time making weird and wonderful low-res real estate. This is why the game's popular. This is why my mum has heard of Minecraft. Wrap it up, guys. It is just about building after all. Great. I um, guess we're done here. Or we would be if a considerably larger project wasn't on hand to crush my theories under its enormous Nordic feet. This project isn't about outlandish fantasy. It's officially sanctioned by a government. Like, of a country. And it's no sculptor's challenge. All 43,094 square kilometers were generated from real data by the Danish Geodata Agency. This isn't Westeros. This isn't Middle Earth. This isn't the USS Enterprise. This isn't Sparta. This is Denmark. I think the idea was kind of of course, sparked by a fascination of Minecraft, but also of being able to, to kind of build a virtual world from geodata, where you could uh, travel around and visit places that you knew from your childhood. I was kind of fascinated by, by that idea. To be frank, I did not know anything about Minecraft before we started this project, but I could hear from Simon and, and I, I, I heard about the enthusiasm from, from uh, Ninus Children's as well, that, that this was something really big. And uh, I, I looked at it shortly and I just said, this blocky thing, is that really something? Um, but tried it out and it really was uh, awesome. And from there, it was just a matter of, of developing the algorithms and, and put our data into play. Westeros Craft and Denmark are two titanic constructs. Both teams are convinced that in Minecraft, size matters, but their motivations couldn't be more different. In the latter, the landscape was compiled by program, so the argument that Minecraft is popular solely because of block building is crumbling like a sandcastle in the breeze. On Neptune. But there are common themes. These aren't the projects of a bedroom obsessive rocking in 3am monitor glow while Herobrine tells him to burn down the school. These are carefully considered 3D spaces, virtual places designed for visitors. Yeah, our servers were blown away right from the start. Uh, the interest was enormous. And of course, uh, it was a whole new experience for, for, for the players being able being, being able to, to visit a country and, and uh, travel around and uh, of course you, you, had, you saw people chatting about let's bomb the schools, let's burn down the schools, but you also saw the, the other reaction, no be responsible, this is Denmark and we have to take care of it. So it was kind of a strange experience that at some point enough people agreed that this was a representation of Denmark. We've been on Kontaku, we've been in Time Magazine. As, as it got more and more, it became a little bit more and more uh, work for me. It, it kind of started feeling more like a job. But the reason I still love doing it is, uh, I don't know, I just feel like, like having such a huge fan base, um, uh, it, it's very rewarding to uh, be kind of at the, the forefront of such a large community. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nicely put. They're meeting places, of sorts. 
not edifices for the self-gratification of their creators, but experiences to share on common ground with friends and with strangers. A place contained on your desktop, your phone, on your Xbox, to look up at the impossible, the everyday, and everything in between and think, that is hot stuff. And you can know without exchanging a word that the chap next to you dressed as Optimus Prime and the guy next to him dressed as Einstein are thinking the exact same thing. But the rules of these meeting spaces, they're something else. What do we call this game of ours now we know it's not about block building, but the shared experience of something bigger? An MMO, perhaps? No. It's so much more.